Today I wanted to talk about speed difference modification in Fire Emblem Heroes. Speed difference is the game's way of referring to the classic Fire Emblem mechanic of determining fallup attacks. I will be referring to speed difference as the speed rule throughout this video. We'll be covering what is the speed rule in Fey, a refresher on fallup attacks, and then the somewhat new effects and skills that modify the speed rule. This would be the frozen status, Diamond's weapon, the wyvern rift B skill, and then a dedicated section for potent fallup skills. First off, what is the speed difference or speed rule in Fey? The speed stat determines who gets to make a fallup attack in combat. In the main Fire Emblem games, this value has varied, but for Fire Emblem heroes, if a unit has 5 or more speed than the enemy, they make a fallup attack. I generally call this outspeeding the enemy, and these are natural fallups. The main purpose of this video is to talk about modifications to that 5 or higher speed rule. That mechanic was not touched for over 6 years. To understand why new skills have been modifying the speed rule, you need to understand the other fallup attack mechanics in Fae. As a refresher, certain skills such as quicker posts can grant a guaranteed fault, which I will be calling free fallups. There are also skills that prevent fallup attacks. Fallup effects can stack on both sides because a natural fallup or a free fallup can cancel one fallup prevention. Stacking fallup skills used to be a viable strategy, however a new effect called no fallup completely messed up this dynamic. The no fallup term has two components. One, it neutralizes enemy free fallup skills, aka defense in no fallup because it protects you. The second effect neutralizes enemy fallup prevention skills, aka offense in no fallup because it lets your unit get those doubles. If you have three free fallup effects, for example, no fallup destroys all three of those. The only way to double is by naturally outspeeding with five or more speed. No fall basically ensures high speed units aren't getting doubled by slow units using free fall up skills. This is pretty strong. To combat against high speed no fall up abusing, this is where speed difference modification comes into play. By modifying the speed rules, slower units can get a natural fall up when still being slower than the enemy. This idea behind modifying the speed rule is that no fall up doesn't interact with natural fall up attacks. Let's now dive into Diamant's Fair Fight Blade. We only care about its speed rule modification, which states, increases the speed difference necessary for unit or foe to make a fallup attack by 20 during combat. The base speed rule difference is plus five. Five plus 20 is 25. This means the new modified speed rule is now plus 25. Diamant and the enemy now need 25 or more speed to double each other. This speed rule modifier stacks with similar effects. This means in a Diamant versus Diamant matchup, both dudes modify the speed rule by plus 20 each. Now one of them needs 45 or more speed to double. The second speed rule modifying skill I believe was Wyvern Rift from Rosado. It's slightly different than Diamond Sword. Relevant part of the skill states, increase the speed difference necessary for foe to make a fallup attack by 20 during combat. This is the exact same as Fair Fight Blade in that the foe needs 25 plus speed to double. However, take note that Wyvern Rift only modifies the speed rule for the enemy to double. If Rosado wants to double, he just needs the usual plus 5 over the enemy. Now, if you think about it, if Rosado is outspeeding the enemy, it doesn't matter that the foe needs 25 plus speed to double. However, this speed rule modification does matter when you interact with other skills since they can stack. That will actually bring us to the most recent speed rule modification effect. Summer Harid's unique B skill, Ice Prince's Seal, inflicts a frozen status on the foe. Frozen modifies the speed rules. It increases the speed difference for the foe to make a fall by X and decreases the speed difference for Harid's team to make a fall by X. Frozen has a base value of X equals 10, which we're gonna use to talk about. So, Diamond modifies the speed rules for both himself and the enemy by increasing it. Frozen increases the speed rule for the foe by a minimum plus 10, so 5 plus 10 is 15. The foe needs 15 or more speed to double Harid. On the flip side, Frozen decreases the speed rule for Harid's team by 10, so we go from plus 5, minus 10, this gets us negative 5. The proper statement would be that Harid needs higher speed than the foe's speed minus 5. I like to think of this as Harid just needs to be within 5 speed of the enemy. When the speed rule is decreased into negative values, this allows a unit to be straight up slower than the enemy and they still get a natural fallup attack. This is not a free fallup skill, so no fallup doesn't affect it in any way. Now the real power of Frozen is that its speed rule modifier can go higher. In Harid's team has higher defense than the enemy, every point of defense equates to 2 more speed. Let's say Harid has 20 more defense than the foe. 20 times 2 is 40. You still have the base 10 modifier, so add the 40 for a 50 speed increase on the enemy. They need 55 speed to double. For Harid, you have 
plus 5, minus 50 for minus 45. This means her rate just needs to be within 45 speed of the enemy, and he'll still double naturally. This is an insane ability on units with high defense and any kind of relevant speed. Now that we talked about speed or modification, we need to fold back in all our other fall up attack mechanics. Summer Herid has a built-in free fall plus Frozen. Despite Frozen's crazy potential, it only modifies the speed rules, which, remember, only determines who gets a natural fall up. This means you could stop Herid with a simple fall up denial skill. However, because Herid has the free fall up effect, the free fall up cancels out one fall up prevention, and Herid is left with the natural fall up. Even with all of this, you can still stop Herid's double. I have an example here of an Azura with no speed and defense who definitely should get doubled by Herid. Frozen may not even be needed. I keep her alive with Fall Maria's Miracle Staff. This Azura has Lance Breaker. Lance Breaker's one fall up denial cancels out Herid's free fall up. To stop Herid's natural fall up, I add Sather, who gives her Azura a status for a second fall up denial. Herid's two fall ups are cancelled out by Azura's two fall up denial effects. At the same time, Landsbreaker grants a free fall up attack to Azura. Frozen increases Azura's speed roll modifier by a huge amount. However, this only stops her from making a natural fall up. Herid doesn't have anything to stop free fall up skills, and thus Azura can make a double. Going back to Wyvern Rift, this is why the skill also comes with Omni Breaker on top of the speed roll modification. Meanwhile, Diamond Sword actually comes with no fall up as well. This ensures we go back to pure speed roll checking. To visualize everything we've covered, I have made a sort of rock paper scissors system of counters. The speed roll only determines who makes a natural fall up. Fall up skills can affect natural fall ups. No fall up neutralizes fall up skills. Natural fall ups are unaffected by no fall up, and the speed roll modifiers change who gets those natural fall ups. Don't take this as a literal weapon triangle kind of thing, it's just how speed and fall up attacks interact. You can combine these different aspects together as well, like Diamant has speed roll modifications plus no fall up, Herid and Wyvern Rift have speed modifications plus fall up skills. Now that we understand what speed difference modification is trying to do, we should cover how it's different than speed stat comparisons. Speed comparing skills are things like godlike reflexes or dodge skills. You have to keep in mind, speed room modification does not actually change either unit speed stats. Godlike reflexes compares actual speed stats. This is why a frozen enemy may get doubled by Harid, but if their speed stat is actually higher than Harid, then they still trigger godlike reflexes. In a similar vein, so, uh, Phantom Speed only affects speed comparing skills. You could think of it as modifying the speed stat, but it does not modify the speed roll in any way. This brings us to our last part of the video, Potent Fallups. So, Potent Fallups come from Emblem Mart's Inheritable Potent B skill and the new Potent Disarm for Daggers. Ivy also has a Potent Fallup in her unique Obsession A skill. Potent skills theoretically modify the speed roll by asking if Decreasing the speed difference by 25 would allow the unit to make a follow-up. Does this distinction matter? Yes. The main reason this distinction is important is because instead of getting a natural follow-up, potent skills grant a potent follow-up. This is another type of follow-up attack, and the big difference is that potent follow-ups are not affected by fall-preventing skills. Potent follow-ups occur after natural follow-ups, which is how you get those three attacks. If the unit cannot make a natural fall, the potent attack takes its place. Another trait of potent follow-ups is that they do less damage. When they occur after the natural follow-up, that third hit only deals 40% damage. The same goes for if the unit has brave attacks. Now, if the unit cannot make a natural follow-up and they don't have brave hits, the potent hit deals 80% damage instead. So far, Emblem Marth is the only way to make a potent follow-up deal 100% damage. Just so we're clear, yes, potent speed roll modification does stack with our other sources such as Frozen. It's just trying to check if the unit can make a potent follow up. For natural follow ups, the potent unit still needs to play around actual speed roll modifications, which is Frozen. To showcase everything we've covered today, let's do a big in game example. First, let's set up the matchup. I'm using the Lunatic Story map Herid in Paralog 99 2. The Herid here will get plus 6 field bus to speed and defense thanks to Herid and Gulvig's odd wave skills. I have listed the flat stats of Herid as 34 speed, 54 defense, including those field buffs. Our contestant will be Emla Mart. I have a neutral 5 star copy. Herid will debuff Mart's speed and defense by minus 7 thanks to his B skill. This will put Mart's flat stats at 40 speed, 26 defense. 
Her raid will also apply that frozen status. Now, Marth has infantry no follow four. This gives him no follow up, which neutralizes Herid's free follow up skill. That will not be a factor in this fight. If Herid doubles, it's purely thanks to speed. Letting Herid initiate, we get these in combat stat boost. I'm fighting on turn two, so Herid's odd wave four doesn't give even more defense. Now, Herid gets plus seven to speed and defense, and this will be a constant value of 41 speed, 61 defense in our examples. We do not care about attacker res for this case. On Mart's side, I have replaced his finish skill with speed and defense form 3. I need this for later. Now, Mart gets plus 8 to speed and defense, and I have no allies in range to buff Mart further. For the in combat stats, pay attention to both unit speed. We need to compare these at the very end. Since Marth has frozen and Herid has higher defense, we need to compare defense stats. Herid's 61 defense minus Mart's 34 defense gets us 27. 27 times 2 is 54. Remember, Frozen has a base plus 10 modifier, so Frozen will increase Mart's speed roll to plus 69. Yikes. For Herid, we do 5 minus 64. This means Herid needs to be within 59 speed of Marth for a natural follow up. Looking back at the forecast, Herid does double. Marth has 48 speed, Herid has 41. Marth is 7 speed faster, but Herid is fast enough to get that follow up. Plus 7 speed is a far cry from plus 69, so Marth does not get a natural follow up. We still, however, have to check for potent follow ups. For potent, it decreases the speed roll by 25. So instead of plus 69, we subtract 25 from that. To get a potent follow up, Mart needs 44 or more speed. Obviously, that's not happening in this example. For example 2, I have given Marth some reinforcements. I have Gatekeeper in range with a lot of bonus stats. Mart gets plus 16 speed and 23 defense now. His new in combat stats are 56 speed, 49 defense. Since Herid still has higher defense, we do the same process, just inserting our new numbers. 61 minus 49 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 plus 10 is 34. For Marth's speed rule, we add 5 plus 34 to get plus 39. In this fight, Marth has 15 more speed than Harid, but that's not enough. For Harid, he needs to be within 29 speed of Marth. He does just that, so Harid still gets his natural follow-up. Now for example 2, Potent shakes things up. Despite not meeting the natural follow-up speed check, Marth does meet the speed roll for a potent follow-up. 39 minus 25 is plus 14. Marth is plus 15 speed faster, so he gets that potent fall up attack. Now, normally, the potent hit would come after Herid's fall up attack. However, Emla Marth has both in desperation on either phase. This means Marth's fall ups, including potent ones, all occur in a row. Sorry if that's confusing. For example, 3, I have moved Black Knight and Ike into range to proc Marth's form A skill further. Ike also has close guard 3 for extra defense. Now Marth is getting plus 20 speed, plus 31 defense. He has 60 speed and 57 defense in combat. Herid still has higher defense, so we do the frozen defense comparison. 61 minus 57 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus the base 10 is 18. This time Marth only needs plus 23 more speed for a natural follow up. His 60 speed minus Herid's 41 speed is plus 19. Marth is still not fast enough for a natural double. He's, will, he will be fast enough for a potent follow-up attack though, because his potent speed check is negative two. Marth would do the same as last time. He does a basic attack into a potent follow-up. As for Herid, this time things are different. Herid's speed roll is now minus 13. Marth is 19 speed faster, so Herid is not fast enough for a natural double. This is why Herid only attacks once. I had to give Marth plus 20 speed and plus 30 defense just to reach this point. Good lord. For the sake of completion, example 3.1, we make a small change. I gave Marth an attack and speed ideal sacred seal, so he gets plus 5 speed. We do the same frozen defense comparisons, get the same values. However, now Marth is 24 speed faster than Herid. He only needed 23 speed for a natural fall up, so this time, finally, Mart does his three attacks. He does his basic, then a natural fall up, and finally the potent fall up. If you remember our interaction chart from earlier, reminder that Herid does not have any fall prevention skills nor no fall up. This means any free fall up would have given Mart a second or third hit by replacing that natural fall up with a free one thanks to a skill. In this fashion, no fault is still important for fast units like Marth. However, as we've demonstrated, the frozen status and other speed roll modifications can really make things a lot tougher. That's everything I wanted to cover for today. I hope most of it made sense because if we get more speed roll modifiers in the future, then that just complicates things more. 
Remember how we had to stack potent speed roll decrease with frozen speed roll increase? Well, that was only for determining potent follow-ups. If you had to face someone like Diamant, then you need to add Frozen's increase to Fair Fight Blade, and then that determines natural follow-ups. I know this stuff can get confusing, but it's good to just understand what the Golda Speed Roll modifiers are. It can help slower units challenge faster foes in follow-up attacks, although watch out for speed comparing skills such as Dodge or Gallic Reflexes still. I'll be curious to see if Frozen ends up on more units or skills. The fact it has uncapped scaling is what makes it very strong. It can turn high defense units into real monsters. Thank you for watching. Keep an eye on those speed roll modification skills, and I will see you guys in the next video.